Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is how many hydrogen bonds between the backbone atoms in this alpha helix explain your reasoning. So here we have a stretch of the amino acids. First let's start with counting how many amino acids we have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now take a look at this picture. This is alpha helix made of amino acids. And as you see at the N terminus, so this is N terminus and this is C terminus, we have only single hydrogen bonds because these carboxylic groups just has no other amino groups to make a hydrogen bonding just because this is a beginning of this alpha helix and those which are at the C terminus of the alpha helix also have only carboxylic groups exposed for hydrogen bonding and amino group as you see has no other groups to make a hydrogen bonding and only those amino acids that are in the middle would have two hydrogen bonds. So as you see carboxylic group here has hydrogen bonding with this amino group and also this amino group has hydrogen bonding with this carboxylic group and by the way here we see a peptide bond. This means that one peptide bond give us two hydrogen bonding if such peptide in the middle of alpha helix but those which are at the terminus is going to have only one hydrogen bond. So you see only here. Now when we talk about this stretch of the amino acids, we also have to understand that this uh, polypeptide chain has N terminus beginning and C terminus, the end of this polypeptide. Here is another picture that might help you to understand this interaction. So take a look. Here we also have a peptide bond, which is here. So amino group and carboxylic group here. And amino group is going to be slightly positively charged and carboxylic group is going to be slightly negatively charged. And here is another peptide bond. And again, here we have slightly negative charge and slightly positive charge. Why these two branches do not react with themselves? Because the distance here is too great and such a reaction possible if the distance between two branches is going to be less than four angstroms. And then amino group and carboxylic group can be brought together and would have a hydrogen bounding. But this only would happen when we will have so I stand for the first amino acid plus four amino acids downstream. And then we are going to have a reaction of this amino acid with the first one. So basically this tell us that first amino acid is going to make a hydrogen bond with the fifth amino acid. So let's write down this interaction. So this is going to be our first hydrogen bond and second, so we just put two here, two plus four, that means that this amino acid number two is going to react with amino acid number six. So let's put another hydrogen bond here. So now we have two hydrogen bonds, three hydrogen bonds, four hydrogen bonds. And now take a look what's going to happen. Now this amino acid number five, it's going to be somewhere here in the middle is going to make another hydrogen bond. So I will just draw it on top with again amino acids that is going to be four amino acids downstream. One, two, three, four. So number five is going to make second hydrogen bond with number nine. Amino acid number nine. Five with nine and six with ten and sevens with 11th. Polypeptide chain that consists of 11 amino acids is going to have following number of hydrogen bonds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six, seven. And out of this 11 amino acids, amino acid number five, number six, and number seven is going to have double hydrogen bonding with amino acids downstream and with amino acids upstream. So we can say that these amino acids are going to be somewhere here and would make a double hydrogen bonds. And those which represent N and C terminus would have only single hydrogen bond. But again, we do not count it twice. The mistake here would be to count that first four would have one hydrogen bond. The last four is going to have also one hydrogen bond. And this three is going to have double hydrogen bond. In this case, we, you just uh, would count these hydrogen bonds twice. Take a look. If we follow this logic, we count four hydrogen bonds here, four hydrogen bonds here, and six hydrogen bonds here. So total would be 14 hydrogen bonds, but we know that actual number is seven. Another common mistake would be to learn that we have 11 amino acids in our polypeptide chain. And you can say, I know that we have two hydrogen bonds per each peptide bond. Then we have 10 peptide bonds here. We just multiply by two and we are going to get 20. This is also wrong number, not 20, not 14, but seven. And you have to follow this logic. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.